Hey guys, what is up? We are back for another C++ tutorial. Um, if you noticed, I'm now using Visual Studio Express instead of Eclipse because Eclipse stopped working, but uh, it's not a big deal, just a different, um, just different ID. So today we are going to be covering for loops, um, just some basic, you know, counting stuff, maybe go into some vector iterators. Um, yeah, just to give you a general idea of what you can use for loops for. So for loops are a really important, I guess, control flow statement if you want to basically repeat a task over and over again and um, add kind of conditions to that task. So it's a much improved while loop that uh, runs conditionally instead of um, all the time. And the condition is checked um, after each iteration. So um, a for loop is composed of three different parts. Um, in this kind of brackets I have here. The first one is the init initialization, which is basically where you can initialize a variable that will be accessible inside the for loop. So a really common one is for int i equals 1 if you want to say go from or int i equals 0 if you want to go say from 0 to 9 then you do i is less than 10. So the second part here is the condition and this condition is checked after every iteration of the for loop. So this can be any sort of statement that returns a Boolean. And then the third part is the uh, step, or it's basically what you're, you're going to be like executing code or like doing something after each iteration. Um, and that is usually reserved for incrementing um, your iterator. So this entire for loop here says, I want to create an integer named i, set it to 0. And for each iteration of the for loop, I want to increment i by 1. So I will be 1, then it'll be 2, and then it'll be 3. And each iteration of this for loop, I want to check this condition. And if this condition is true, we execute. If it's false, we break out of the for loop. So that is basically a really simple way to count from 0 to 9. And we can see this if we just do just a simple C out. And I'm going to put a get care here so that my console window doesn't close since um, it doesn't have a console output like Eclipse. So we can go ahead and build this. And we can go ahead and run it. So you can see that this for loop actually executed 10 times from 0 to 9. So this is like super useful for things, you know, other than just printing 0 to 9. But um, you can do things like sum up variables or something like that. So you can have like an int sum equals 0. And let's go ahead and do sum equals sum plus i. And then let's print the sum at the end. The sum from, let's do 1 to 10, or 0 to 10 this time, is sum. OK. And we're going to change this condition. Instead of stopping when i equals 10, um, It'll break out of this loop because 10 is not less than 10. We're going to do i is less than or equal to 10. So once i gets incremented to 11, it'll break out of this loop. So this way, we're summing the numbers from 0 to 10. So let's go ahead and build that again. And let's run it. So the sum from 0 to 10 is 55. That sounds about right. <laughs> so Another, I guess, useful thing with a for loop is if you're using vectors, which I believe we covered a little bit in in tutorial number four. Excuse me. Um, so if you have something like a vector of integers, um, let's just call them int vector, and say I want to add this vector to push back i. So what I'm doing here is I'm using this for loop to fill up this int vector. Um, so if we do something like, I guess, int vector dot get, uh, I guess we can do find, or I don't know if there's brackets, because I'm, let's go ahead and do that, build f7. Okay, so with, you know, with vectors, you can do bracket access and stuff like that. So it shows that the first item in the, not the zeroth, but the oneth item in here is actually one, which makes sense since we're just filling it up with zero to t uh, from zero to 10. Um, so let's just change this here. So 
that's useful. You can like think of all the different ways that you can use for loops. Um, and one of my favorite ones is say after we fill this up and we want to iterate through these this in vector and maybe print it out again after we filled it or we've done something else to it. Um, uh, so we can do something like for uh, let's see vector vector int iterator it equals int vector dot begin it does not equal int vector dot end and then plus plus it so this is basically doing pretty much the exact same thing but you can see like these these um, these different constructs like the initialization, the conditional, and the step are a little bit more confusing, like it's doing a lot more. This is basically saying we want to create an iterator. An iterator is basically a way to, you know, iterate through like a list or a vector or something like that and access each item. Um, we create one, um, call it it, and we set it to the beginning of the vector. And then we, our check is basically what, ha if this is not true, then we jump out of the for loop is that it does not equal the end of the vector. Um, so when it actually reaches the end, it'll jump out. And our step is we just increment the iterator, just like incrementing, you know, any other uh, integer or something like that. And we can go ahead and do the item in the iterator is, let's go ahead and print that out. And to access so an iterator is actually a pointer to the item in the vector or the list or whatever you're iterating over. So I guess we haven't really covered pointers or references or things like that. But to understand it now, you just have to dereference it by a prepending a star to it, and then going and then um, you will access the actual integer inside of there. So let's go ahead and kill this. Let's build it and run it. So you can see we pretty much did the exact same thing in this for loop before, but now we've done it with an iterator. So if you say, for example, have like a list of books, like strings stored in an iterator, and you want to iterate through them and find a book with a particular name or something like that, you can, um, you can do that really easily by just having a for loop and just have a check for, for this it value. So if I wanted to basically find maybe the number five, um, let's go ahead and stop this. I can do, you know, if it equals equals five, we'll add a special message, you know, we found five. And if we go ahead and build and run. So this time we found five and then it printed out the item in the iterator is five. So I think really understanding the basics of for loops can open up, I guess, all of so many different like new applications and things you can you know, use them for. It just basically makes you know repetitive iterations just very simple to write, and it's just in you know a few lines of code you can accomplish so much. And you can put as much uh, code inside this scope as you want. You know it's 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 limited to whatever you whatever you want to do. Um, so yeah, that's that's it for. Uh, for loops, uh, pretty simple. We'll probably be using them extensively throughout the rest of the tutorials since they're like one of the core um, aspects of pretty much any programming language. Um, yeah, that's it. Make sure to uh, check out the website. And I'm now putting the source code on GitHub as well. So you can go ahead and get this awesome source code. I'm sure it's super useful. <laughs> All right, that's it. Quackware signing out.